Hey, um, are you and the dogs going to spray anything while I go fishing today? Dear Jen, ladies and gentlemen, just five pieces today, but I want to talk about these two first because they're the most complex um, animals in the room, as it were, not necessarily for the patterns, um, but for some of the best practices as far as repainting a Livingston because both of these employ the EBS technology with, with the electronic bait fish sounds that come out of them. So there's certain things that you can and can't do when you're repainting them. Uh, we'll start with the single piece. And you can see right on the package that it kind of shows you what happens on the inside. But what it doesn't tell you is you can actually change the sounds. Now the factory setting for Livingston is the Randy Howell um, classic 2014 win for his bait fish sound, that one in the classic. And there's three touch points so basically the way you do this is you, you submerge it in water or you set it in water because this is a top water anyways but you want uh, this one this one and this one back here you have to touch all three of those simultaneously and I'm talking about touching the eyelets um, after it's been submerged for five seconds when you pull it up you touch all three of those um, preferably without the hooks, you probably want to test this stuff out, grab some split ring pliers and, and take the hooks off. But you can actually change the factory default. It should not be in silent mode, but if it is, that's the way to do that as well. But you touch all three eyelets at the same time for a couple of seconds, and then it'll start going through its programs. And you find one that you like, and then you lock that in. But don't take my word for it. Go to livingstonlures.com. They have a really good blog um, and some tutorials on how to how to change the EBS sounds because it does employ a chip with some different technology in it. But the biggest key to these is making sure once you repaint these for a customer, these have the eyelets have got to be a hundred percent paint free and epoxy free or clear coat free, whichever you use. Um, it can't have a drop on it so you want to because it has to it has to contact the water it's the reaction between the water and the metal alloy that these eyelets are made of that triggers that EBS and the same is true for the multi-jointed swim bait um, the difference is they can't pack any technology or wiring into the middle section and tail section so everything is packed into the head so that employs the bottom eyelet and then this these two little touch points up here when you guys are painting these and what I had to do on this is once I had the clear coat that was dry I, I took a little exacto knife and I cut a little star pattern across the top of this and then I gently flaked this off because this has got to be exposed in order for the sound to come and emit here when it's submerged in the water and then if you were to reset this bait you touch this this and this eyelet uh, there's nothing loaded in the bill as far as I know um, last I checked there wasn't they they employ this eyelet and these two touch points and you can kind of see the circuitry in uh, in that side of it but this is in the perch pattern and I'll revisit the other one it's a red crush pattern that's a little bit modified but this is the, uh, the perch pattern that he had requested. Now, Livingston does have a perch pattern, but it's not near as defined or lifelike as this is. Um, this is a lot of pearl paint that I used and some moss green detailing. So that gives you a little bit of a depth perception. And then I did red on the, uh, on the fins and some custom red eyes for him. So that's one of three pieces. Just to revisit this one real quick. This is a red crush that he had requested uh, on the pattern. Red crush. Um, but it also looks like a Texas coral snake. So I tricked it out just a little bit more and put the black on the tips. 
um, red on yellow, kill a fellow, red on black, venom lack. But he's going to be going after toothy critters and gave him some cool custom snake eyes. And that is the red crush. There's one more bait in this order for him right here. And I can't begin to tell you how many messages, and I think there was even a couple comments on the post itself when I posted this thing yesterday. Everybody's like, what in the world is this? So this is a small batch Swedish design headbanger. This is a floating. It's got a grub tail on it, and it's a really cool lure. It's patent pending. They may have acquired the patent by now, but on the bait itself, underneath the head and the cup, um, it says patent pending still, so I know they applied for a patent. It's one of the most uniquely designed baits I've ever seen. Um, if you go to head hunt or headbanger, see if we've got too too many heads on this on this order. If you go to headbanger lures, uh, they've got some pretty cool YouTube videos. There's a massive catch and blow up on uh, Chickamauga with a huge bass that was caught and lots of lots of pictures with my uh, pike and muskie so we he asked for a distressed crappie and lighter coloring that would match the grub tail that came with it so I gave him the lighter color on purpose for this crappie this distressed crappie and what makes it my distressed crappie is the red veining and I've been doing that for a few years now I think I first introduced the veining on this one on this particular pattern, gosh, 2015, 16, somewhere around there. It's been a few years. Um, and it's it works really well. Uh, it's a good fish trigger. But this bait, dang, this I mean, it's, it's cool. It's one of the most unique baits that I've ever seen, for sure. So we gave you some cool eyes on this, Mr. McClanahan, and I hope you have. I, I definitely need to see the fish catch pictures with this bad boy. Um, and it looks like they have an L shape in here, and they probably molded their grub tails to this. I would imagine they just about have to. So, but yeah, cool concept, headbanger float. I left, I, I pulled that, I put some tape on there just so that you would be able to say, yep, this is the real deal. So I don't, I, they probably don't make knockoffs of this. Um, just super cool. I'm going to spend a couple more time uh, minutes just looking around this. <laughs> this is one of the neatest baits I've ever seen. Really cool. Really innovative design. And they do have some... I'll, I'll link the YouTube video of this thing swimming and how it, this, this head boot almost acts like um, a chatterbait would. So it's just a wild, wicked, erratic. It doesn't make the same pattern twice when it's swimming. That's how erratic it is. It's it's pretty cool. So if you guys go to headbangerlures.com, it's Swedish. They sell them here in the States. I know they sell them up in Canada as well. Um, check them out. They got some cool patterns. This is one of 10 pieces. Uh, I've got some more pieces over on the clear coat rack. I'll probably show those off Monday or Tuesday going out to my buddy RJ um, asked for some swim baits I believe these blanks came from Cedar Run if I remember I haven't looked at his there's a ah, it's up there right there is a message from him and it's I haven't looked at that yet but I'm pretty sure that we discussed that these came from Cedar Run um, they seem to be uh, pretty pretty decent they're weighted pretty well a little wake bait swim bait and I did this one in the calico goldfish and it's just some some custom paint and then uh, get some more I might double up a couple of the patterns that are your go-to patterns but um, one of the cool things about working with RJ is that when he sends me blanks or asks me to do uh, bulk batch orders for him it's always you have free reign of whatever you want to do Jim which is awesome I appreciate that um, and I usually hook you up with some pretty cool patterns so that's one of those and then we've got the return of Mr. Stitches Poor Mr. Stitches. Uh, I, he's a Halloween bait um, from my mind and my innovative, I guess, creepiness. <laughs> is that is that a phrase, innovative creepiness? So Mr. Stitches, um, he, he got hurt a couple of years back, and he's been patched up. He's got a little road rash. He's actually got more, um, more road rash than normal on this one. But uh, this is a custom order. It's part of a, another three-piece order with this gray ghost right there. 
um, that's going out to uh, another client of mine, Mr. Carpenter. These should all be going out Monday morning. So pretty stoked about that. That is this. And then one more little piece to show you guys real quick. And this is the finished craw that I did, this Dinger Party Crank little S pattern. Um, this is the craw that I did uh, painted for the KBS video. And I keep getting messages from, I think, Dennis. I haven't received your email. You said that you sent me an email. I know you're interested in it. I'm going to hold this for another day. Um, but I'm going to try and reach out to you if you're watching this video. And I'll go back to the other video and check it out. But if you're interested in it, I will hold it for you one more day. But I did not get an email from you. It's uh, And I'm going to flash it here right now. It's Jen Crevasi at JekyllBates.com. So get a hold of me if you want this because these these type of baits don't hang out long um, in the shop. They, they're usually gone pretty quick. But this is a walk around and I did some some smaller segments on the back which I really like doing occasionally. Sometimes I'll just do two big segments and then smaller underbelly segments. But I decided to add a little bit more to the back of this. But this is coated in that KBS Diamond Strength Clear. Um, good stuff. I like it. I like it a lot. That is all the news that's fit to print. It is Saturday morning. I gotta get back to work, folks. Finish up my coffee and uh, cheers, bubbles.